13, 1 through 10, represents the papacy. Elder Ted Wilson in this video is going to say so much. This video has gone viral for good reasons. Elder Ted Wilson is going to show you. He's going to speak about the mark of the beast. And I wish, I wish, I wish the critics, and I do have my issues with Elder Ted Wilson by all means, but I spend, I spend most of my time not speaking against him but praying for him. I wish the critics would highlight these type of videos. I wish the naysayers, I wish those who always see everything that's wrong with the church will take the time to say, yeah, I may have some issues with the man, but it's time he preaches the truth. This time he tells it like it is. There's times he, he stands for what is right. Let's encourage the man, right? Let's encourage the man. Listen, I, I don't get any, anything back for saying this. The, the grace and the benefit that I extend to Elder Ted Wilson, I will extend it to the chief of sinners. Because I say, you know what? It doesn't matter who he is, what position he holds. But surely, friends, we got to be gracious and merciful sometimes. Because the Lord has been good to us. There are some things we can criticize. But the spirit of condemnation that I hear, I said, boy, that is not Christian. You may have a good argument, but the attitude behind that, the divisiveness, the spirit of condemnation, the constant examining and finding dirt to expose and the pointing of figure at every man's sin is not a good thing either. So I say that to say this. Let's take a listen to this video. Because Elder Ted Wilson is going to speak on this matter. And again, we've been going through the series of the Mark of the Beast. And I'm not done. I'm not done. I gotta, I said, I'm studying as I go. And I'm inserting different, actually, studies in the lessons. So he's taking me a little bit of time because, you know, there's a lot going on in my world. However, I'm not done. <clears throat> so you can expect a video next week about the Mark of the Beast. Okay? So please stay tuned. Here is the thing. He's talking about the, far, the foundation of the beast. The mark of the beast. And I want you to hear how balance of a thought this is. Let's Greetings, friends. Today, as we continue our journey through the great controversy, we will look at the foundation leading up to what is known as the mark of the beast. This is a topic that many people wonder about. And as we delve into the study, it is very important to keep in mind that the book of Revelation is filled with symbols and the Bible itself interprets those symbols. Now, in our video message last week, we discovered that in Revelation 13, there are two prophetic beasts, one coming up out of the sea, the other described as a lamb-like beast coming up out of the earth. We read in Revelation 13, verse 11, that the beast that first appears like a lamb with two horns speaks like a dragon. Then in verses 14 and 15, we read, And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. In verse 17, it refers to this image of the beast as a mark and explains that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So what is this mark? Is it a literal mark or is it a symbol that carries a deeper meaning? Let's explore more deeply what we understand from the Bible. We see in Revelation 13 that this image is made by the two-horned or lamb-like beast and that it is an image to the beast. It is also called an image of the beast. So, to learn what this image is and how it will be formed, we must study the characteristics of the beast itself. Well, this beast, represented as 
coming up out of the sea, as we read in Revelation 13, 1 through 10, represents the papacy. We also saw that the two-horned or lamb-like beast described in verses 11 to 18 of the same chapter represents the United States of America. Understanding this, we see that Revelation 13 describes a cooperation between the papacy and the United States in enforcing a mark of authority. As we have studied church history outlined in The Great Controversy, we have seen that when the early church became corrupted by departing from the simplicity of the gospel and accepting heathen rites and customs, she lost the spirit and power of God. And in order to control the consciences of the people, she sought the support of the secular power. The result was the papacy, a church that controlled the power of the state and employed it to further her own ends, especially for the punishment of heresy. We saw how this power was exercised for 1,260 years as it persecuted those who chose to follow their consciences rather than the dictates of the Roman Church. We then saw how, as foretold in Revelation 13, verse 3, this power would be mortally wounded, but that the deadly wound would be healed. As we saw from history, the first part of this prophecy was fulfilled in the year 1798, when the Pope was taken captive and the power of the papacy was broken for a time. However, the prophecy also foretold that the deadly wound was healed. And just as the first part of the prophecy was fulfilled, we can be sure that the second part will be as well. It's helpful to keep in mind that it was apostasy that led the early church to seek the aid of the civil government, and this prepared the way for the development of the papacy. We read about this apostasy in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no one deceive you, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. So apostasy in the church will prepare the way for the image to the beast. The Bible clearly tells us that before Jesus comes back, there will again be a state of great spiritual decline. We read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. My friends, we see trouble all around us today. As the world continues its downward spiral, political and religious leaders will look for ways to bring order and stability out of chaos. It is this scenario that will bring strong pressure for everyone to unite for the supposed common good. And it is then that we will see the return of the beast whose deadly wound is healed, and the enforcement of his mark. In our next video, we will look specifically at what the mark of the beast is and how we can avoid it. Until then, I strongly encourage each one of you to download the book, The Great Controversy, at the URL shown at the bottom of the screen. There you will find further explanation of these very important prophecies 
that we are studying together. This is, this is really good, well done. You know, I'm a little bit jealous here, man. The reason I say that is because it took me, it took me about, let me show you. <laughs> it took me about an hour or so to present this matter. Um, and he actually did it in a matter of nine something minutes. This is not to say what I did was wrong. I, I know I went the long way about this thing, but the image of the beast, I'm talking about the mark of the beast and so on and the image of the beast. Here is the image there of the beast. Never I spoke about that. If you haven't had a chance to watch that because I put videos on there, so mine is a lot more extensive and so on. I even let people hear some of the voices and what they're calling for. Or this. You can go to the doctor. So I, I won't say too much. I will encourage you to uh, aren't doing it anymore. We're not we're not playing this game of separation of church and state anymore. So if you want to get some of the meat, it's, uh, it's doing really good for about four weeks old. Got seven thousand for a long video like this. That's not too bad. So I will encourage you to go and check it out. I'm going to put a link. There should be a link in the description of this video about the image of the beast. So I talk about the mark of the beast uncovering the significance of the image in prophecy. So this is where I spoke the time. I took the time to speak about that. Elder Ted Wilson took an hour and 12 minutes of my sermon. He turned it into a, how many minutes did he do this? He did this in a matter of what? Nine minutes and three seconds. And the last minute is prayer. Goodness. Well done. Well done. You know, when you can summarize a doctrinal truth in short, a, 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 a short period of time and yet able to convince the heart and convict the mind that what you're saying is true, that is powerful. Just in case you don't know, it's not matter how long you can preach, it's how well you can put so much substance in a short period of time. That is good stuff right here. It's just something about theology, it's good to know that. Anyway, well done. And again, we have spoken about this matter and I, I will be glad to read it to you again. And he spoke about that, he quoted this and I wanna look at that again from my from the Ellen White app here. There it is. So when the early church became corrupted that by departing from the simplicity of the gospel and accepting heathen rites and customs, she lost the spirit and the power of God in order to control the consciousness of the people. She sought the support of the secular power. This is what's about to happen again. Okay. The church is going to start looking for the support from the secular power. And the result was the papacy, a church that controlled the power of the state and employed it to further her own ends, especially for the punishment of heresy. In order for the United States to form an image of the beast, of the, beast the religious power must so control the civil government that the authority of the church will be employed by the church to accomplish the, the authority. Okay, the authority of the state will also be employed by the church, right church, to accomplish her own ends. So apostasy opens the way for union of church and state. Union of church and state lays the foundation for the mark of the beast. That's kind of what happens. So apostasy in the church will prepare the way for the image of the beast. That's what we're about to see. So when church and states unite, the next thing in line is the enforcement of the mark of the beast, which is, uh, which is the national Sunday law. And some people may say, that's not going to happen. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, you talking trash. You don't know what you're saying, Pastor James. Go to my series, The Mark of the Beast. Go listen to presentation number five. I will say start from number one because I take you on a journey. But if you go to presentation number five and you watch the entire thing and then tell me, tell me then why this is not The Mark of the Beast. After you watch it, then tell me why. So... A lot more could be said about that, but I want to end this video right there. Thank you for listening. Once again, Elder Ted Wilson was on point. Share your thought and perspective with me. Are you getting ready for this thing? How are you getting ready? What are you doing? What are some things that are on your mind? I want to hear from you. If this thing is going to happen since we know it's going to happen, what are some things we ought to do? What manner of person ought we to be knowing that the day of the Lord is approaching, but before this thing happens, before Christ returns, there's going to be a mark of the beast and there's going to be persecutions and so on and again stay tuned because i got more videos coming your way about this matter and we're gonna expose it as i know how have a good one